I get asked on a fairly regular basis how you go about transitioning your CAD details into Revit details. And if you're like most firms, you've probably got a pretty decent sized library of CAD details for basic, you know, detail items that aren't necessarily part of the model. So there is a process, or a couple processes actually, that are the best way to go about doing this. One, which is my preferred method, is to basically bring in the CAD file, explode it, and then transition that information from CAD information to Revit information. The alternate method for that is to link it in and then basically just trace over it. Now, when we talk about transitioning the CAD details to Revit details, it's not something that I would recommend you do, you know, for your entire library all at once. Um, I recommend that you would do this on a project by project basis. So as you go through and you're doing different types of projects and you're needing, you know, some of the details that you have in your CAD library, we're going to transition them at that point. So we're slowly building our Revit library, you know, a little bit at a time. So this next series of videos are going to go over the process on how to do that. I want to point out one more thing before we get started on the how-to of this process, and that is what we're going to be doing is all going to be done in a test project. We're not going to start this process in an actual working project. So we have a drafting template that we're going to start with. We're going to create a dummy project that we're going to bring this information into and either trace or explode and convert. And then at that point, we're going to export this out, so save the view out. And then once that's done, we'll bring it into our working project. When we talk about doing drafting inside of Revit and we want to translate our CAD details into Revit details, my personal preference is I have a template that is just for my details. So in here I've set up my various line types that I need for detailing and I've already generated you know my fill patterns that I want to use. So that's kind of my starting point for how I'm going to process this information. Now on the CAD side you're going to want to make sure that you clean up this detail. So get rid of any attributes. Um, I prefer that I W block it out because that gets rid of a lot of garbage. So just W block it out, save it as a new file. And then that's what we'll use to bring into Revit. Okay, so I've started a new project based off of my drafting template. And you could do this with your standard working template. It's just got a lot more stuff in there than you need. So that's why I prefer to do this with a drafting template. Um, so once we've got this started, we're going to create a new view. So we need to create a drafting view. And you'll name it accordingly. So stair base detail is what this is going to be. And if you know the scale, go ahead and set it right now. Um, it's not going to matter generally for the modeled portion itself, so the detail portion itself, because that should be done full size. But it does matter for the annotation. And you'll kind of be able to tell when you bring it in whether or not you're close to the right size. So we'll go ahead and say OK. And then I actually have to insert this CAD file. I can't just link it in. Um, because in this example, I'm assuming I'm going to explode it and change it to Revit information. Another, um, you know, line of thought on how to do this is you trace over everything. So that's obviously another option. I'm just generally too lazy for that. So I'm going to go ahead and import it. And you can preserve it or you can invert it, whatever you want to do. Um, I'm going to go ahead and preserve it. Center to center is fine. And then we'll go ahead and say open. And then this happens a lot where you can't actually see it. And that's just because we said center to center. So it, it's, you know, off of where we can see. 
So ZF will bring it into the view. And then from here, what I recommend, partly because things tend to disappear when you explode it, so I'm just going to make a copy of it off to the side so that I have, you know, a reference of what it looked like before. And then when we explode it, we're going to want to do a partial explode. A full explode would break this down into all its little, you know, parts and pieces, you know, all the little individual lines of the hatch. So we're going to do a partial. And this is another thing that's pretty common. You're going to get some errors. Line is too short, can't draw filled region, so it's it basically can't recreate that filled region type. So, um, and if there's any 3D data, it's going to get rid of that because we are in a drafting view. So to proceed, you're going to have to delete elements. So we'll go ahead and delete those. We're going to want to swap out our text. So it, it changes it to a text within Revit, but we want to get rid of all these extra types. So make sure you swap it out to the type that you need to use. Same thing down here. Your dimensions also are going to have to be redone, so you'll want to redimension everything. For the leaders, you're going to have to actually add leaders again, you know, whichever way you want to do these. So you'll add the leaders and point to the right thing. And then after you get them all repositioned, depending on how layering was set up in this, you can filter by layer. So if you select something and find out what its layer is, so detailed KN is what we're looking at. If you kind of grab what you need and then filter and then just narrow it down to detail KN. So again, this is after you've done your leaders. Then you can just delete those all at once. So essentially what you're going to do is you're going to go through and you're going to start changing line types. So your tab key will grab, you know, connected lines and then you could swap out a bunch of them all at once. So we'll say I want these detail three so it's heavier. And you know, same thing here, you can also use match properties. So you're going to want to go through and redo, you know, the information that we see in here. So swap it out with our lines that we've created in Revit to do this. So that's the process you're going to go through. And then I'll go on to the next step, you know, in another video. Okay, at this point, I've got my cleaned up CAD detail. It's converted to Revit. We'll want to verify that before we do this next step. So you can do part of it by selecting everything. So we'll just do a crossing window and filter. So we basically want to make sure we don't have any of the other, um, well, layers basically from AutoCAD and that they're all Revit lines now. Now, the one exception is the detail items, and that's our filled regions. So you're going to have to verify those, you know, if you weren't diligent about making sure you changed them all by selecting them and making sure they say one of the Revit ones and not something like this. Because if it says something like this, you're going to want to swap it out before we do the next process. So you'll have to go through and select those and just kind of verify um, what's going on. But once you've done that, now we can export this view, basically save this view out. So now I can save to new file. And you're going to want to save it into your custom um, content folder, so for detail items. And I've already saved this one, so I'm just going to save over it. And yes, I do. So now the reason I did this is because that file that I just exported is pristine. It has no CAD information in it whatsoever. So now when I take it into my Revit project, I don't have to worry about it adding a lot of clutter to my file. So now when you go to bring it into your uh, Revit, it will actually import it as, you know, a drafting view. So now I'm going to show you how we're going to bring in this um, Revit detail that we just created into our new 
or our working model. So in this example, I've just started you know, a new project based off of the architectural template. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert from a file, and I'm going to insert a view from a file, and then I'll find you know that Revit file that we saved out, so that detailing one, and I want to make sure I grab the one without numbers behind it, and we'll go ahead and open, and it's going to ask me, if there was more than one in here, it would ask me that as well. So we'll go ahead and say OK, and OK, and then if you notice, it just adds it to my drafting views. So if you had created a whole you know, slew of them within one project, you could bring them all in at the same time, but the process should be the same. So you should, you know, basically create them in a dummy project so that all that trash stays in that dummy project, and then you export it out, you know, to its own file. Now I'm going to show you how we can take that detail that we brought in and reference it within our project. So even though it's not based off of modeled information, we can still tie it to modeled information so that when it's placed on a sheet, it knows where it's referencing something within the project. So I'm going to create a section, and I'm going to reference another view, and I'm going to pick the view that I want to reference, and then I'm just going to draw my section mark and you'll want to make sure it's pointing the right direction um, to do this, but you know you can just flip it to look the other way. So you'll notice that it does not create a section in here, and that's because it's referencing this. So now when I place this on a sheet, let's go ahead and say OK, and we'll drag this onto the sheet and place it. And now if I go back to my plan view, you can see that it's updated that information. So it's a semi-intelligent way of documenting your project. I'm going to show you the alternate method that I talked about in one of the previous videos on how to translate your details, you know, into Revit details. So I've created a drafting view and I've named it, you know, accordingly, so based on the type of detail I'm going to create. And this time I can actually link in the CAD file because I'm just going to trace over it. So again, judgment call on how you want to do this. We might want to invert since we know everything came in yellow last time, so we'll go ahead and say open. Again, zoom to fit, and then this time you're just going to trace over everything. So you're going to, you know, recreate the text, you're going to redo everything, and then you can just basically unlink this file and everything goes away. And then same process, you'll want to export this file to its own drawing so that you have individual pieces of details within your detail library. One thing to keep in mind when we're tracing over this is that a lot of this, in this particular example anyways, is going to be filled regions. So I would do those first. If you do your region types and then of course pick the type of filled region you're going to do, you're going to want to use your pick tool most likely because that way it's tracing exactly what we see. Sometimes you can get your tab key to work and select, you know, other lines, but it's hit or miss. So just go ahead and quickly trace around it. Don't worry about um, locking. We don't need to lock anything. This isn't parametric. And then, as you guys know, when we're working in Revit, you're going to want to set your line types, you know, based on the weight that you want them to be. So I want these to be heavier lines. So we'll say fours, and then we'll make these two invisible. So we'll just move up here to invisible lines and then just go ahead and finish so you'll want to do all of these first and then come back and do any additional line work on top of that 